O.J. Simpson, the infamous former football star and acquitted murderer whose trial gripped the nation, has died at 76. His family says the cause was cancer. The former football great played 11 seasons in the NFL. He was known as the juice to his fans. Then he made a fortune in movies, advertising and television. But he rose to infamy after being accused and then acquitted in a lengthy trial over the 1994 killings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. In 1998, O.J. Simpson called me, unsolicited at this network, defending himself during his fight for custody of his kids. The argument has been made that a man who is found civilly liable for the death of the mother of his children is by definition an unfit father. Well, I, you know, I can't agree with that. I am innocent. I did not commit these crimes. I went to court. I was found innocent by a court. I went to another court. They found me liable. Well, I'll deal with that liability. Joining me now, NBC's Chloe Malas and NBC's Cynthia McFadden. Cynthia, how many days were you in that courtroom well, during the trial of this century? Listen, jury selection was two months, and then I sat in the courtroom for, for nine months uh, every day. Yeah, and it, it was the trial of the century. It was hard for anybody who wasn't alive at that time, I think, to really understand how huge it was, how it shocked and riveted the nation. Tell us about... Well, O.J.'s position in the cultural firmament. Well, that was part of the reason. Yeah, he was a big deal, as you just alluded Huge. to. He was a big deal. It was a, it was a confluence of celebrity, of money. I mean, that defense team called the dream team for a reason. They were in so many ways. Um, and it was the first major televised trial. I mean, America watched. America had an opinion as, as we went along. Those opinions varied, as we saw at the end. But, but people got to watch it. And so people would say, hey, what about that Cato Kalin testimony today? Or what did you think of Mark Furman's testimony? It, it became a cultural touch point, And I think it still stands for a lot of, of uh, we learned a lot uh, about America through the lens of that trial. Everyone in the country just about knew who Cato Kalin <laughs> and Mark Furman were. It was unbelievable. Chloe, let's talk about today. Uh, I think it was shocking news to a lot of people. What are we learning about how O.J. Simpson died? So we know that it was cancer. Um, in a statement from his family, they say that he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren um, and that they're asking for privacy. But reports circulated in February um, that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer and that he was in hospice. But he actually took to X, formerly known as Twitter, and he said, hospice, hospice? You know, I'm not in hospice. I'm not dying. Um, so we have not been able to confirm that it was prostate cancer um, that ultimately caused his death. But we know that he had been sick for quite a while, Chris. And Cynthia, it was clear to me in my interactions with him, and as you said, you were in the courtroom with him day after day after day, um, that his legacy, his reputation were almost everything to him. As I covered his second trial, what was his impact on society? What about his legacy now? Well, you know, I would say that he was acquitted, but he was never free. Yeah. I mean, his life just went downhill after that acquittal. I mean, in, in the, the whole conga line of, of both small and, and finally a robbery that he went to prison for 10 years for. Uh, he never recaptured the status that he had. He never got his life back uh, in the wake of that. And for many people, he will always remain a person who got away with it. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I should say since the conversation that I had with him on this uh, network was about whether or not he should have custody of his children. He did regain custody of his children. Uh, Chloe Malas, what are you hearing from Los Angeles? What are you hearing in reaction to the death of O.J. Simpson? You know, I have actually been on the phone, uh, you know, speaking to individuals who knew O.J. Simpson, um, who actually were part of his uh, trial, individuals um, that testified. Um, I actually just uh, interviewed a few moments ago uh, a man by the name of Keith. Keith Zaslamovich, who dated uh, Nicole Simpson after her divorce from OJ. And he said that this is justice. This is justice in its own way, but that it's hard for him, hard for the sisters of Nicole Simpson, the family members, that it took 30 years, but that he has some resolve, some closure, knowing that OJ is 
not on this earth anymore. Um, but obviously, that is one opinion. Um, we've been reaching out to uh, O.J. Simpson's children, family members. But as of now, the statement uh, on his social media channels is that they want privacy right now as they grieve. You know, Chris, it was interesting. Marlon Goldman's father, um, the other, the young man who was who was murdered that day, said that O.J. Simpson's death simply made him remember how much he misses Ron. That was a family who I think um, was one of the first, because of how much coverage this story got, really brought to life the agony yep. of a family when there is a sudden death in that way, and he kept. Uh, the legacy of his son, the story alive for years and years and Along years. Along with his daughter, Kim, who, who as you yes. know, spent her, much of her life, devoted much of her life to victims' rights. And there's the dad, mom and dad, and, and Kim on the left there. Uh, Cynthia McFadden, Chloe Malas, thank you both so much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.